Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you complete OSI model in computer network layer by layer. So here, I will explain you each and every layer along with practical example where by using Wireshark network, I will show you how exactly data flow is happening inside computer network using OSI model. So let us see first how application layer is there. So when it comes to application layer that belongs to application only. So it is software based layer, right? And it handles bunch of protocol. So first of all, let me tell you what is application layer. Like you might be using Chrome browser, you might be using Microsoft Outlook, or you may be using Skype, right? So those are the application. And in these applications, there are some protocols. And those protocols handles all those applications, right? Like you see here, I have mentioned web browser is having protocols like HTTP hypertext transfer protocol, or it may be HTTPS. This H stands for security, right? So web browsing along with security that is having HTTPS protocol. You may be having file transfer protocol FTP, right? So these are the protocols which is there with browser. Like as if you use Microsoft Outlook, in that case, there will be SMTP protocol, simple mail transfer protocol. When it comes to Skype application, at that time, there will be Skype protocol inside. For remote desktop application, we may use Telnet or RDP. Telnet remote desktop application that belongs to operating system of uh, Linux and RDP that belongs to operating system of Microsoft where remote desktop application that is there with Microsoft. So these are the protocols which is there with various application, right? Now here there are a few basic things that you should know. Like HTTP, HTTPS or FTP, these are open protocols. Open protocols means what? Like in web browser, you can access any website, right? Those protocols are open. Like you can access engineeringfunda.co.in, you can access google.com, you can access any website. For that there are some open protocols which is there inside web browser but proprietary protocols means what those protocols are there for that particular application only like with skype application skype protocol is there that is proprietary protocol which is there for skype like with rdp remote desktop protocol microsoft is having that proprietary right so that is how various protocols are there right now Second layer that is a presentation layer. Now, what is presentation layer? See, it does three things it performs translation, it performs data compression, as well as it performs encryption. Now, what is the meaning of translation? See, whatever we are writing in web browser, that is what there in terms of ASCII or Unicode. ASCII is there with respect to English language, but as if you have some other language like you may be using hindi gujarati or you may be using italy right so in that you you will be having unicode of that so these characters now that is getting converted into binary first that is the meaning of translation over here which is happening inside presentation layer second thing which is happening inside presentation layer is data compression see data compression is very essential why the reason is as if you don't do data compression, then your computer network that will have to handle large volume of data. So if you compress the data, then data handling inside entire network that will go down, right? Usually you will be observing data compression that is playing very essential role in audio and video, right? If you observe raw file of video, so that size will be very huge. Like only one minute raw video file that will be having 5 GB data. I'm talking about raw file. I'm not talking about compressed video file, right? So once you perform video compression, that file will be having size in terms of few MBs only, right? So data compression that is happening at presentation layer. After a data compression, it also performs encryption. So encryption is very essential. Like when you access website related your banking so at that time password security is very essential right 
you may be accessing some information which is so private and which is so essential for that you need to have security and for that we need to have encryption that is happening at presentation rate. and after that third layer comes that is session layer so session layer that is responsible for session establishment session management and session termination right so first of all you need to understand what is the meaning of session see to understand meaning of session you need to understand one simple example like for example as if you access facebook so inside facebook what you will be doing is you will be logged in inside that your account so for that what you will be doing you will be writing your username and password so that is a login process of session after login you may be doing anything right and at the completion of that session what you will be doing you will be performing logged out operation so this is what one session that you can say so one session means what you are logging inside that session you are performing something inside that session and then you will be getting logged out of that session so that is one session now establishment of session termination of that session and management of session that is happening inside session layer right it provides authentication and authorization now let me explain you what is the meaning of authentication see authentication means when you write your username when you try to connect with the session at that time what you will be doing you will be writing your username and password if your username and password is getting matched then only you can be able to log in inside that session so that is authentication right now authorization means what once you logged in inside your session let us say you are using facebook and in facebook you want to see a picture of one of your friend but if that friend is not allowing you to see that picture then authorization is not given to see that picture to you authorization means what during session if you want to access some data then are you allowed to access that data if you are allowed to access that data means you are authorized person to access that data so that authorization that comes under the category of session layer task so in total we are having three layers now you see application presentation and session layer application layer works at software level in which there are various softwares that i have already discussed over here presentation layer that does what it converts given characters into binary then it performs data compression and it performs encryption and session layer performs establishment management and termination of session where it does authentication and authorization right but if you observe practical scenario then in practical scenario my dear students all these three layers that is been handled at application only this is the reference model right osi model is a reference model but as if i talk about chrome web browser then chrome web browser that handles all these three layers task right now right so majority of web browsers or majority of applications that is handling these three layers in a single application right but this is reference model that's why we need to understand that in a layer by layer sequence now very essential part that comes that is transport layer right so let me explain you how transport layer functions so see transport layer of osi model that will be having tcp or udp protocol see regarding tcp and udp i'll be going to make se separate video right but just consider tcp udp that is getting handled at transport layer right now now i'm going to explain you essential working of transport layer first like you see transport layer that performs what it performs segmentation layer. segmentation it performs flow control as well as it performs error control now what is the meaning of segmentation see segmentation means here we will be breaking large file into smaller segments and once you provide smaller segments from large file it will be given with numbering numbering means what here we will be providing sequence number and port number so segmentation is done 
at transport layer. Segmentation means what? You may be having 1 GB video file. Now, entire 1 GB file that you cannot place on network. What you will be doing is you will be bisecting that entire file into small, small segments. Then you will be doing numbering to it. Let me show you over here. Like you see here, we are having one data file, right? That data file that is generated by this three layer in combo of this three layer. And that is given to transport layer. So what transport layer does is, transport layer will do segmentation of this, where it will be bisecting this data into segments. You see, I have given sequence S1, S2 up to Sn. So segment wise, that data is getting bisected, right? Now each segment, that will be assigned with numbering. Numbering means what? Here, two datas will be given. One is sequence number and second is port number. Right. Let me show you practically how it is happening. So, for that, let me take you to my computer. In computer, I am using uh, Wireshark software. You can observe over here. You see, in Wireshark so software, uh, here, see, all the packets given as per numbers, right? So let me open this packet, which is this TCP packet. And here details are there. Here data is there in terms of binary, right? Now, if you see this TCP packet, and if I talk about here transmission control, then you see what is given here. So in transmission control, if you observe here, port number is given, right? Source port, destination port, that port is given. As well as if you observe here, sequence number is given. Right. So, sequence number and port number that we are providing it at transport layer. Now, again, let me come back over here. So, see in transport layer, what we do? We perform segmentation where we bisect data into segments. Along with segments, what we do? We provide numbering like sequence number and port number. Now, with port number, one basic thing that you should know. Like along with port number, there is a well-defined process. Like if data belongs to video, then process with respect to video will be there. For that, well-defined port number will be there. If data belongs to audio, then process related audio will be there. For that, well-defined port number will be there. Likewise, as if data belongs to text, image or any data, based on that, well-defined port will be there. It That data may be there with respect to web browser, right? So, with respect to that well defined port number that is there, right? So, process is there along with the port number that you should know. Sequence number is just a sequence of data, right? Now, next thing that is a flow control. Now, this is very essential. Like if transmitter is faster than receiver, at that time flow control is very essential. Let me show you by example. Let us say here we are having transmitter and here we are having receiver. As if transmitter is sending data at 10 Mbps, but receiver can handle data up to 1 Mbps only. Then what will happen? This receiver cannot receive data as per the speed. So, receiver will have to tell it to transmitter that you should lower down your speed. I can handle only 1 Mbps, right? There can be second scenario. Like receiver is handling 1 Mbps speed, but transmitter is sending data at 0.1 Mbps speed. At that time also, receiver can tell it to transmitter that you just increase your speed, your speed is very low right now. So, flow control is very essential. If flow control is not happening in that case, what is possible? You know, like if transmitter is fast and receiver is slow, then data may not be received at receiver side. As if transmitter is slow, but receiver is fast, at that time, you will be receiving total data at long delay, right? So, here flow control is very essential and that is getting managed at transport layer. Here, error control is also very essential. That comes under the category of transport layer. Here, performance error control based on automatic request and checksum that is happening. Like see, for example, when you send data from transmitter to receiver, let us say these are the segments that we are forwarding over here. So here, as if I say this segment 2 data that has lost in medium, then Receiver will tell transmitter that the sequence number of segment 2 that is not received over here. So, automatic request, request that has been forwarded over here to transmitter so that transmitter can resend that data again. Right. So, that 
that usually happens in tcp ip protocol when i explain you tcp ip protocol at that time you will get to know like how automatic repeat request that is happening right but that is happening as per as if data is getting lost lost somewhere inside physical layer right so that is possible now see second is checksum checksum means what see along with data we add some redundancy and that redundancy is added for identification of error like you see the segment which we transmit from transmitter to receiver along with that we are adding some redundancy along with it and that redundancy is checksum that checksum explains you whether received data is correct or not like see for example as if i forward some data along with that i am giving numbering now when receiver is receiving it at that time that checksum is not matching to the data at that time receiver will get to know like okay there is some error and there can be possibility that receiver can resolve that error also right there can be two types of algorithm one is error correction and error detection is second one right so both algorithms are possible with checksum now let me show you in wireshark software so that will give you more clarity like how checksum is there right so if you observe i have already explained you that uh, uh, data of tcp i am talking about this packet so you see along with that packet you see checksum that is unverified over here right so let me check it with other packet like see i am talking about this packet right now and as if i open this you see here checksum is unverified this is the checksum you see unverified checksum is there so this is the checksum that we are forwarding along with the packet right so that checksum that we are forwarding along with that packet why the reason is here we just want to identify whether there is error or not right so that is what the main case for which we are having that right so this is how transport layer functions now see after a transport layer that that is now that data from layer 5 now after up data from layer 5 now that will be data right after transport now that will be segments right now that segment will be given to network layer so let us see what will happen with that segment inside ne network layer now see network layer that will convert that segment into packets now what is the meaning of conversion of uh, segment to packet see with packet along with segment we will be adding source and destination ip the reason is see we want to transmit that data from one node to another node so obviously there are few information that we need to send like who is sending that data and to whom we need to send the data so here logical addressing that we need to do so source and destination ip that we will be adding in network layer so segment that was there at the output of transport layer now that will become packet over here at network packet means what segment plus source and destination ip right segment plus source and destination ip what it means it forms logical addressing so now we will be having idea about who is sending that data and to whom we need to deliver the data now let me show it inside wireshark software so let me take you over here now see here what i am going to do is i am going to explain you this by some uh, practical examples like you see here we are having uh, one tcp packet you see this packet in which you see this is destination ip that is 192.168.0.126 so that is my ip address for that let me show you how i am getting my ip address in command prompt I am writing IP config. Once I write IP config, I will be having my IP address. So you see, Wi Fi IP address that is there with me as per IPv4 that is 192.168.0.126. So that is my IP address. Here, you see, with this packet, my IP address that is a destination, and this IP address that belongs to Google 142.250.192.0.126 right so google is forwarding that data to me now how do i get to know like this is ip address of google so for that you see what i have done is 
I was opening uh, some Google's uh, web browser, like YouTube is Google's web browser. And along with that, if I check this IP address, which is this, then you will be observing that domain is there with Google, right? So Google is forwarding via this IP address to me, right? So as per this Wireshark, this packet that was responded by Google to me, right? And in that, again, let me show you all those information. Like you see port number is there, sequence number is there. You see this is sequence number of that data. And along with that, you see this is checksum of that data, right? So I think now you are having fair enough idea about how things are there, right? So you see that checksum and all those things that comes under the category of uh, transport layer. At network layer, we do logical addressing, right? So you see, I have given that example where this is my computer, which is having IP, which I have shown it in Wireshark, by which I have tried to access YouTube. And YouTube belongs to Google. So here, these are the IP address that I'll be adding with segment layer, right? So segment is converted, is segment is generated by transport. So segment plus source and destination IP that becomes packet, right? So that logical addressing that is been done at network layer. Technically, it does routing along with masking. Now this is very essential. See, routing along with masking means what? Like, see, for example, a user is asking for some data from Google. Then do you think like Google and user is directly connected with each other? No. In between Google and user, there will be many intermediary nodes. There will be so many intermediary nodes. So first of all, there should be a path determination. So in one by one, intermediary node will come. And via those nodes, request will go to Google. And then again, Google will give data to user via many other intermediary nodes. So that path determination, that forwarding of data that is referred as routing and that routing will happen along with masking like see for example as if i am requesting something to google then see that request data requested data that will be having see this ip which is as per 142.0.0.0 that is absolute server address of google but intermediary nodes will be having some ip address right so here some digits that is getting masked and via via it will get propagated to Google. And at last Google will come to know like, okay, from this IP request is been made. And now based on that service will be given to that particular IP, right? So routing and masking that is happening in sequence. So path determination, routing and logical addressing that happens inside network layer. And after network layer, you will be having packets over here. Now those packets, which is there at network layer, that will be given to data link layer. Now let us try to understand how data link layer is functioning over here. So in data link layer, it will be giving service based on physical addressing. Now physical addressing means what? Physical addressing means we are having a device, which is a physical device, right? So physical addressing means physical address of that device that will be added over here. Like MAC address that is been referred as physical address. Like you see what we are doing over here. From packets to frame we are converting that data at data link layer, right? So packets are getting converted into frame. How you see source and destination MAC address plus packet plus tail that will be equals to frame, right? You see. This is here we were been having data right after uh, 7, 6 and 5 layer. After that at transport layer we will be having segment right. After that at network layer we will be having packet. Packet means what? IP address of source plus IP address of destination plus segment that will be packet. Now after data link layer there will be frame in which what we will be doing we will be adding MAC address of source, MAC address of destination and some tail, right? This tail that we use it to detect error inside a frame, right? So two times error detection is happening, right? See here at data link layer, we will be adding tail for error detection only. 
so here frame means what at data link layer the packet forwarded by network layer will be having additional information added as per mac address of source plus mac address of destination until that is converting into that is converting that packet into frame over here at data link layer right so mac is a unique address of given device now you might be thinking like what is the meaning of unique address see unique address of device also have multiple aspects like see we may be communicating via various categories of mac like see my computer that is having three possibilities of communication see i can communicate via ethernet so with ethernet there will be network interface card right so it is physical io device that you can see so with mac address with ethernet network interface card may be there that gives you physical address of your computer if you communicate via fiber optic cable for that also there will be well defined mac address if you communicate via wi-fi for that also there will be well defined mac address right so mac address of source and destination that you will be adding over here right for communication so that is happening at data link layer plus tail that we are adding tail means here we want to avoid error for that we want to detect the error that's why we are adding tail over here so in short you can say data link layer does what it does access to the media media means here communication may happen via copper wire it may happen via fiber optic cable it may happen via wireless media right so that access to the media that is been defined over here at data link layer so media access control that has been done media access control means what whenever you want to communicate via medium at that time you will have to see whether medium is free or not for example you want to communicate at 1 mbps but medium is not having available bandwidth as per 1 mbps then what you need to do you cannot communicate at that speed right so that is there has to have medium access control so to avoid collision to avoid conflict of data on network there has to have medium access control that happens at data link layer right so you see i have shown my computer in which there can be two three categories of mac address wi-fi is having my one mac address nic network interface card which is there along with ethernet cable that could be having one mac address or fiber optic cable that could be having another mac address so in short there can be three categories of mac address by which this computer can communicate and this mac address is very essential why the reason is at data link layer we form frames where along with packet we add source destination mac address along with tail right so that is how data link layer is working and once we are having frames at data link layer we can forward that to physical layer see all those things that is happening inside computer but after that we need to forward that data to physical layer means media right so what is physical layer see physical layer should be converting that frames into signals right so here frames will be there in terms of bits so now those bits that should get converted into signals now as i have told you there can be three categories of media there can be copper media there can be optical media or there can be wireless media right so in case of signals for copper wire you may have to convert that in terms of electrical signals for ethernet cable if you have signals in terms of optical cable then you'll have to convert that in terms of light signals as if wireless medium is there in that case you'll have to convert those signals into electromagnetic waves right you see here for twisted pair usually with ethernet you will be observing twisted pair will be there in that copper media will be there so signals will be converted in terms of zeros and ones as per electrical signal as per square wave you can observe over here right in detailed video i'll explain you how exactly signal signaling will happen for manchester coding right differential manchester coding all those things that i'm going to explain you in future coming videos but right now just consider electrical signal will happen as per square wave over here as if we talk about light signal which is there with optical cable then inside optical cable we send signal in terms of light signal where a laser diode will be used so laser diode that will be on and off for ones and zeros right so that is how uh, 
signaling will happen now here there is one thing that you need to understand like see optical cable will be having very high bandwidth right and a copper wire that will be having less bandwidth and based on that we are using that in computer network like as if you have requirement based on low bandwidth application then you can go for ethernet cable right for short range communication but for long range communication along with high bandwidth is required in that case you should be going for optical cables and wireless medium wireless medium that we use in terms of wi-fi or when your mobile phone that is communicating with cellular tower at the time also wireless medium comes into the picture like you may be using 4g 5g in your mobile right so internet access with cellular tower that will happen as per wire wi-fi sorry wireless network right it is not wi-fi it is wireless communication right as per 4g 5g but when it comes to wi-fi connection with your router at your home so that is wi-fi connection so that is how various categories of layers are there and finally the signal that will go on to the uh, medium and now based on these layers step by step that data request now that you are forwarding on to the channel see this is how entire thing is happening i hope you have enjoyed this Thank you so much for watching this video. If anything that you would like to mention, please do note over here. I am listening to you. Thank you so much for watching this video.